Hi, I'm Jenna with Anime Fire, and I'm here today with KG Tang. How are you, KG? Good, good. Doing great, you know. About to eat dinner in a little bit, so really excited about that. But otherwise, having a great day. How about you? I'm doing all right. I'm in the East Coast, so it's it's past dinner time for me. Oh, <laughs> past munchies time. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, hopefully you um, had a great dinner. I, I did. It was pretty good. But I'll hopefully try not to interrupt your dinner time too much here. <laughs> no worries, no worries. So I wanted to start off by uh, asking you a really hard-hitting question, and that's... Mm. Uh, have you played as Gojo on Fortnite yet? Oh my god. So, okay, I have a super embarrassing admission. I've never actually played Fortnite. Um, I've always sort of wanted to get around to doing it, but like uh, by the time I really had the time to sit, sit down and play, it's not even really, it's not a tower defense game anymore, right? It's completely, it's something completely different now. It's a... I've uh, never played myself, so I can't gotcha. even... Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely now on the to-do list. Uh, um, I, Gojo looks uh, hilarious. I saw that you can actually do like the hollow purple in the game. Um, so yeah, that that's that's fantastic. Uh, it's it's definitely on the to-do list. I just keep seeing things on my page of Gojo just like default dancing, and I'm, I yeah, just... it's so in character works. too. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's completely on brand. It's completely uh, in his wheelhouse to do. <laughs> it definitely is. So speaking of Gojo, I really wanted to talk to you a lot about this amazing praise you're getting for the dub of season two. Thank you on behalf of the fandom for that. Well, thank you. That's really sweet. That's really sweet of you to say. How does that feel to get such a positive, overwhelming response about your work? Oh, it's really, it's really, really sweet. Um, like, uh, you know, obviously this is a really important part of the story. Um, we really, really wanted to do it justice. Um, uh, when we first preview the episode, uh, uh, when, when he, when there's the, uh, heaven and earth line, you know, uh, at first I was like terrified because I noticed that the flaps that were available to do the line were so much shorter than the English, uh, version of, you know, that quote so we were like oh no we're gonna have to change the words uh and on the day of it turned out all we needed to do was move two of the like uh one of the one, the first part of the first line in the previous like uh wide shot and it seemed to fix the whole thing so um that was my biggest concern over the season but otherwise it's been you know it's it, it, i i've lived with gojo for a little bit now so he he's it's really fun being in his like kind of teenage brain um, as opposed to the adult uh, version. So yeah, it, and to, to see that people have kind of like really enjoyed what we did, it's, it's been really lovely. It's been really, really nice. It's, it's been great. I'm such a huge fan of the show to begin with, and I was excited to see Hidden Inventory um, brought to life, and it's just phenomenal. I love it. Um, like I said, like we, this, we, we knew how, um, how, how important this, this part of the story was for everyone. So um, we... We tried to, at least I did, I tried to look into the script in advance to see if, like, um, were there parts we could, like, you know, uh, really, really spruce up, really, really bring life to, um, to really solidify, like, how how important this this piece of the story is. And, I, I, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I, I know a bunch of my little actors are, too. So, yeah, we're, su we're super thrilled to have produced what we did. Is there a lot of pressure you felt going into that, or did you kind of feel like you had done everything you wanted to. Um, I feel like, okay. So I feel like if I had not seen the episode in advance, which I did, I would have been a little more scared because then like on the spot, I would have been like, Oh, some of this dialogue may not work or fit the flaps. Right. But because, um, because the Japanese, uh, hits, you know, about a week beforehand, we're able to preview it. You can, you have like the whole week to panic about what you're going to do. And then by the time you get there, you hopefully have figured it out. And I, I think we figured it out every time. So it was, it wasn't too bad. I think you did too. And talking about trying to kind of stay true to the source material and bringing that to life, you had mentioned that I saw on social media about the opening line of season one, Gojo's You Cry In line. Yeah. And do you want to tell us a little bit about how you worked on that? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, uh, depending on, I, you, you'll hear me mention the word flaps a lot. Those are uh, just, you know, that's short for lip flaps. You know, those are king in our in our business. So in, in um, that first episode, the you cry in line from the manga 
uh, had to be localized or, or, you know, the localization person put it down as, are you crying? Because it fit the lap, uh, flaps a little better. But, you know, I, I have the good fortune of, you know, having been to enough of these conventions and events and being a fan of the show myself. I knew the you crying um, line was was pretty, pretty iconic. Right. I, I've seen tattoo panels of that manga panel. You know what I mean? On, on way too many people to, uh, you know, to to not have it in the original uh, words, if possible, you know, like that's, that's all it, that ran through my head. All these people with that tat, but with the tattoo of that panel, I'm like, Oh no, Oh no, 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 no. I can't do this to them. So yeah, the, I, I mentioned that to the uh, director and I was like, Hey, if possible, if you can just, I, I think I can stretch out you crying to cover all these flaps. If you could just give me a shot and it ended up working out pretty good. I'm sure everybody with those tattoos, thanks you for not having to, you know, have that redone. <laughs> because I have to see those folks at those cons, right? So I don't want to be there being like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's your tattoo. It looks amazing. I just have to apologize to every single person at the exactly. convention. Yeah. yeah. What was it like for you exploring this young version of Gojo that we see in season two so far? Oh, it was very freeing, very fun. I mean, you know, he's not saying that adult Gojo is a very serious person, right? Like he's just absolutely not. But, you know, he, he's got it a little more together than his teenage counterpart. It, it's it's so fun being able to visit like that kind of, you know, when you were a teenager and you had just way less responsibilities, you had to answer to way less people. And if you were just kind of a douche on one day, you, you'd you forgive yourself. You're like, eh, <laughs> I'm 16. <It> happens. <laughs> yeah, whatever, <laughs> you know? Um, and that's, that's always a really fun energy to, to inhabit and Gojo of all people, um, using that energy has been, has been a, a joy. Um, I'm, I'm sad there's not more, you know, uh, more teenage, uh, uh, Gojo and Gato antics. I really enjoy them. Um, but I'll cherish what we got. Cherish. Yeah, exactly. You make the best of what we have. Yeah. <laughs> Was there anything that you specifically wanted to bring out in Teen Gojo as opposed to what you have done with Adult Gojo? Yeah, I really wanted to drive home how disrespectful he is, like really, really, really disrespectful. Um, he, he, you know, it, it sounds weird to say that Gojo matures, right? It's it's always a strange word to put around his name, the word, uh, the word mature. Um, but he does like, you know, uh, a, a great loss in life will always, uh, uh, spark some sort of growth, uh, even in Gojo, you know what I mean? Um, so I, I hesitate to even think about the kind of person he would have become, uh, were it not for that moment in his life. But I think it's so interesting to watch that moment happen, to watch the evolution of a character like this, who has been good at everything, who has wanted for nothing his whole life, go through this very human experience. And I think it's just one of, if not the most important aspects of the story so far uh, that we've seen from JJK. So yeah, yeah it's, it's, been, it's been a really good experience going through teenage gojo them it makes it makes current timeline gojo make a little more sense right yeah, when you see yeah. where he come where he's coming from mm -hmm. so speaking of these these moments that really drive home who gojo is uh tomorrow we have the infamous kfc scene about <laughs> yeah right oh kic i, I think right the yeah. kic <laughs> i thought that was pretty great that they actually yeah. animated that Ditto, ditto, ditto. Can you I prepare the, no, us no, a no, little? No. Prepare you? Oh man, how do you how do you prepare for a breakup in front of a chicken place? Um, like it's 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 tough, you know. It's like Gojo doesn't have the answer to that either. I don't think. No, no one does. Not even the honored one. Yeah, it's um, yeah, he never he he never ordered uh wings again after that. Probably. Um. Well, I mean, the Japanese episode is already out. So um, if you're if you're keeping up to pace, you've already seen it in one way or another. But if you haven't, who? Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's uh, it's the episode where it sort of starts to tie together this arc and the previous one. You see how uh, Gato is influenced to go down the road he did. You see what happens between them. You see uh, almost an ideology switch between the two. You know, like uh, Gato's uh, burden falls to um, Gojo, who takes it happily um, to basically, I don't know, partially hold on to what they had together, you know, uh, um, live in the memory, whatever you want to call it, however you want to justify the the ideology switch. Um, 
it's it's a heavy episode so if you're anime only um i'm i'm you know praying for you <laughs> how did it feel to act that scene out um it was you know it, it was it was something it was we we've all been sort of getting ready for it in one way or another you know but to actually be in the room when it happens yeah it was heavy we we um you know it was solemn we gave it the respect it was due um uh you know it's uh we're we're a joke cracker in 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 the studio when it's you know on our off time but there was no jokes cracked during uh during that scene um yeah i think i think we did it okay i hope i hope it turns out okay you know hope people enjoy it uh i'm it, it it's such a it's such a what's the word i'm looking for it's such a heavy scene because when i say it sets up literally everything else to happen in the story i really mean that like what happens in this next episode becomes jjk um it's it's wild so yeah i'm, I'm excited for people to see it so hidden inventory really does set up this like you said, what's to come in the show, the whole essence of the show. And it really is setting up this deep connection and important relationship between Gojo and Gato that we see kind of come back without spoilers in Shibuya, <laughs> um, trying to be as vague yeah. as possible. <laughs> what do you think is so important about that relationship that you really wanted to convey? Um, I think, well, it, well, I, you know, not not to not to poo poo on anyone else's relationship in the story, but just from like a meta overarching wide shot perspective, the Gojo Gato relationship probably is the most important one in the story, just because of how many events it drives, how many of uh, fate strings it pulls on, and everything that happens after, like we talked about this next episode, um, falls on them more or less. Right. Um, if their relationship was anything other than it was, it, it, this none of this would have happened. If, if they liked each other even a little less than how much they do, it, none of this would have ever happened. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think it's um, overblown to say that their relationship is probably, you know, with a couple of asterisks next to it, the most important one that that we need to be paying attention to in the story right now anyway. Absolutely. Especially, like you said, for animes only, definitely keep an eye on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. With, as I mentioned, with Shibuya coming up, what can you kind of tell us without <laughs> delving too much into spoilers? Oh my God. I've been suffering. <laughs> I've been suffering over Shibuya since it came out. Can I tell you, like when it hit, like I, it, it, Cause I was like, I was already a huge fan of JJK and I was like in, I was in till the very end. And when Shibuya hit it, I, I literally had to walk away from the manga for like a little bit. I was like, okay, I'm going to take a break. Um, like before you, you know, went into uh, reading it, before you continued that arc? Before I continued the arc, right? Okay. Well, okay. I'll tell you the exact, oh, how do I talk about this? How do I talk about this? You know, my you favorite character is, yeah, my favorite character is Nanami. That's all I'm going to say, yeah. right? Like, you know, um, yeah, I'm not spiritually ready for it. Um, it's very difficult to be, but yeah, um, good luck. Good luck, folks who are seeing it for the first time. I'm, I'm, I'm praying. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a very good way of putting it. <laughs> and like you said, you're a, you were a huge fan of the manga before the show. Were you actually a fan before you were cast? Oh, no. So, so interesting enough, um, as much of a fan of it as I am now, when I first read for the show, I actually had no idea what it was. <laughs> like I read for Gojo, like I was like, oh, okay, Jujutsu Kaisen was like my fourth audition of the day. I was like, oh, uh, maybe one more anime audition. Yeah, let's do. Oh, oh, hi, baby. Hey. Hello. Hi. Oh, can I hi. ask her a question? <laughs> yeah, 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 you can ask. This is Vex. This is Vex. Can you just. Just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, baby. Just a what little. a sweetheart. Hi. There's one of two sisters. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. You can't stand in front of the Thank you. I have two cats, and I was like, they're going to be at the door screaming to get in. Yeah. I'm so afraid. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't pay attention to you for a few minutes. 
and it's fine. Sorry. Uh, sorry. What were we just talking about before my cat um, very cutely interrupted us here? That was adorable. Um, I said, were you, you were a fan of the manga, but when you went into audition, you weren't familiar at all with. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. Uh, so yeah, when, when I turned in the audition, I, I still had no idea what it was. Um, it wasn't until they cast me and we were, after we had done the first episode that I had done a little bit of research um, before I went in and I was like, oh, JJK, people seem to like this show a lot you know and then um from there i started reading like the whole manga i couldn't put it down until that spot and then i put picked it back up <laughs> um yeah yeah it's uh the the very beginning i, I didn't know but very quickly i find out i found out what who would you want to play if you weren't gojo nanami i knew you were gonna 110 percent. oh oh i love nanami ah I was going to ask you who your favorite character was, but I don't even think I need to uh, no, bother. No. <laughs> yeah, best character, Nanami, not even close. Like, I, I you know, I, I go to these, these cons and, you know, people want to joke about dating Gojo all the time. But I'm like, dude, if you're going to date anyone, OK, if you're going to date anyone from JJK, it's got to be Nanami. Nanami, man, he'll, he'll like clean your car. He'll do your taxes. You know what I mean? Like, he's that guy, man. Oh, you know, yeah, he, he's he's responsible. He's got yeah. it all taken care of. That's right. Your laundry would be done every day. Every Pressed, day. folded. Completely. Perfect. Edges, neat, clean, sharp. What do you, how do you like um, teen Nanami with his little emo 2006 oh hair? He's so cute. He's so cute. He's so cute. It's, it's, it, it's, it's wonderful seeing that transformation to, to who he grew up to be. You know, Nanami still trying to find himself phase. Oh, it's not what? a phase. It's, like, what it's not a phase. <laughs> You know, I was a teen in 2006 in college, and I just look back, I'm like, wow, that's like, it actually really hit the culture right on the head there. <laughs> if you could have any curse technique in the Jujutsu Kaisen te universe, what would you pick? Um, like, a, like one that one of them already have? Yes, one that they already have. And one, you know, if you want to make one up, feel free. Right. Um, well, I think, I think the best of the ones available that I've seen, you know, Gojo aside, because, you know, it's, it's, it's rough not to want to be invulnerable, but like Toto's the boogie woogie. That's so cool. That like it's cool. It's so utilitarian. It's like, it's so, it, it's one of the most creative powers I've seen probably in the show. So yeah, probably boogie woogie. It's a good, a good one. I, I yeah. think her speech is pretty cool, but the fact her that you're limited pretty... so much kind of negates also, Apparently, it like really roughs up your throat. So I couldn't exactly do voiceover and have her speech at the same time. I guess right. your vocabulary would also be limited to like five words, so it would not yeah. be really helpful for voiceover actor. Every, every role I do is just saying the word salmon. <laughs> that would be difficult. I would like to see how you would try to find the right job for that. Right. So in both Jujutsu Kaisen and and Bungo Stray Dogs now, you voice teen versions of two of your biggest characters. How do you think Teen Gojo and Teen Dazai would get along? Oh, well, I, they would be obnoxious, like really, really obnoxious. I I would know that for 100 percent fact. Um, they would unfortunately probably get along pretty well <laughs> for, for everyone else. You know what I mean? Like Teen Kunikita and Teen Nanami need to like run. Um, I think I think they would have the best TikTok channel. Um, I would watch it. Yeah, yeah, I would subscribe. Uh, yeah, no, they would be they would be little shit houses together. I'm, I'm, it'd be I'm sure. Yeah, it'd be, it'd now, be the worst. Who has the healthier relationship? You think in friendships? Do you think it's Teen Gojo and Gato or Teen Shuya and Dazai? Uh, <laughs> it's tough. Uh, that yeah, that's a fun question. Um. You know, this this says something, but probably Gojo and Gato probably has have a bit more of a healthy relationship than Shuya and Dazai. Those two need to sit in a room and talk. <laughs> At least Gojo and Gato get along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They can go to the, you know, they can go to a restaurant together. They can go to a movie. Dazai and Shuya, there needs to be adult supervision at all times. Constantly. <laughs> Did you ever want to be anything besides a voice actor? Yeah, yeah. I remember when I was a little kid, um, I used to be a big X-Files fan, right? So uh, that's all I knew about the FBI, literally. I was like, oh, cool. If you get into the FBI, you get to investigate aliens. That's awesome. So I was like, 
I was like, okay, maybe I'm going to be an FBI agent. And then like that morphed into like, when I got a little older, I was like, what if I was like a gritty detective, you know, like I want to be that dude who like, like showed up in the alley after there was a crime at like three in the morning with like bad coffee, you know, and it's like drizzling and, and like the, the water's like getting into my coffee, but I'm too grizzled to care. I want to be that guy. You know, like he takes a sip of the coffee and he's like, my God, makes you lose your faith in humanity. You know, like that guy. Um, Hold on the, so, the sunglasses, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for a very long time, I wanted to be that guy. Uh, but then I very quickly fell in love with acting. So, you know. When did you decide that you wanted to go into acting? Was it young as well? Um, yeah. So I, I took a couple of theater classes in high school and after a couple of years of it, I, I felt myself like really, really take to it. I'm like, Oh, this is a lot of fun. Like, this is the first thing I remember doing in school where my brain was like, here is dopamine. Uh, you know, you actually enjoy being here. Um, so I looked into what it took to become a professional actor after that. It was, uh, depressing, but you know, I, I kept going and then, uh, ended up here. Here you are. Yeah. Do you do you still kind of wish that you can be a gritty detective too? Uh, a little bit, honestly. Like I kind of like the detective fashion. They get to wear the big coats, you know, with the big hats, you know, and the ties. Um, but you know, I think I voice enough. Yeah, 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 but I voice enough detectives now where I, I feel like I've made it up to my child self. You know, you've healed that inner child. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dazai counts as one, right? He's he's a de- he's a quote unquote detective. Uh, he <laughs> is, didn't he? Wasn't he officially? I mean, he took an entrance exam. Yeah, yeah. He's got the paperwork. Yeah. I don't know how much you could trust his paperwork, but no. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I would hire Osamu Dazai as a detective on anything that was important to me. But yeah, you know, maybe maybe he'd do it really. Well. <laughs> he makes things more difficult for the detective agency than he does help. <laughs> right. <laughs> What anime are you into right now? Uh, what anime am I into right now? Um, uh, I'm watching a little bit of Baki just because this season is like ridiculous. Um, there's like a caveman that come like gets unfrozen and all the strongest fires in the world want to fight this caveman because he's like, well, this caveman was fighting T-Rexes. And I'm like, I want to watch a man fight a caveman. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that, um, you know, uh, obviously we're keeping up with JJK, uh, trying to keep up with Bungo too. Um, not, not too many that we're watching for just, just for the pleasure of it right now, unfortunately, but hopefully soon. Do you have any recommendations I should check out? Do I? Oh gosh. I always have like 15 different anime going at the same time. Fair enough. Do you Um, have like a top three you could pitch my way? Oh, let me think now. Um, Oh my goodness, I can't think right now. Oh, I watched um, Hanukkah, Toilet Bound Hanukkah. Toilet really Bound good. Hanukkah. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really fun. It's 12 episodes it's, or 13 episodes. Really fun. Um, but kind of once you get past the fact that he's a dead kid, it's fun. <laughs> so that's a good one. Um, I have a bunch in my list I want to watch, but I just, I do like 15 things at once, so I forget what I want to watch. Fair enough, fair enough. But I'll, I'll definitely check out the uh, the... What was it? Hanukkah? Toilet bound? Toilet bound Hanukkah. <laughs> Toilet bound Hanukkah. Wait, let me look at my pins. What do I watch? Uh, Demon Slayer. Well, I would no hope Demon you know you, you're you somewhat caught up on Demon Slayer. I absolutely am. You ready for the next arc? Oh, oh man, that's another one where it's like, like being an anime fan and a voice actor is weird because like you can read ahead to stuff where it's like, ah, I can't mess that up. Like... <laughs> Like is, I've read yeah. all the way to the end of Demon Slayer. And yeah, there are some scenes where like, oh, oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to try my best here. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm really excited for those for this next arc. Oh, Demon Slayer. It's always always a good time, sad, it's happy old. The same. Well, there's two more arcs left. Like? It's uh, well, the next arc is barely an arc, right? It's like the Hashira training arc, it's like what, two episodes ish, three episodes, right? And then the last bit, we go straight into the end. I can't believe it's here. You have to really channel that that grumpy mean. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Ditto, ditto. Well, KG, I think that wraps us up for today. Thank you so much for giving me your time and talking to me. Of course, of course. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.